Hello everyone, this is Gail, and I'm going to try something totally new for me. I am not a sculptor. I do not know how to sculpt. I don't even like to try to sculpt. But I've, I've, my sister really loves pandas. And her birthday is coming up, so I thought I would try to make a panda for her. And I looked at several examples on the internet and got some ideas of what it should look like. And then I've been sitting here this morning playing with dimensions, and I wrote them all down so I would be able to know exactly what's what. And I will put these dimensions in the... Um, in the description of this video so be sure to scroll down uh, to the description underneath the video to get the uh, dimensions for my my panda so I'm going to start with a one inch ball and I probably shouldn't have these lined up right here let me get a piece of patty paper so I can move these around Two while I'm at it. And for those of you that have been wanting to know where to get the patty paper, RJ Crafts is now carrying both the patty paper and my plastic sheets that I use. So if you need any um, anything like that from RJ Crafts, they are now carrying everything. So it's take, she's been trying, Rhonda is so good at looking for, I'm sorry, I'm trying not to mash these too much, even though I am going to mash them when I put them on, but I want to keep them in some kind of order. And it might be easier to make all of your shapes at one time, like I did. And then just put them together and shape your pieces as you put them together. So let me just move that out of the way. And I'm going to get another piece of patty paper. This is like a waxed paper. They're made to go in between like hamburger patties or sausage patties. But they're really nice for working with the clay. But you cannot store your clay on these for any length of time because it will leach. But this is the one inch ball of white, and I hope I cleaned my hands off after I conditioned all this clay. I'm just going to warm it up a little bit because it's only, well it hadn't been long, maybe 15 minutes. But I just want to make sure it's going to be nice and warm. And what I'm going to do first is wipe off my work surface. Working with white clay, you want to make sure your work surface is clean. Okay, so now I'm going to take this one inch circle and I'm going to roll it into a teardrop. Except this is now wet and it's sliding, so let me dry it off. I used a baby wipe. And they dry fast, but not fast enough for me. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to roll it on my work surface and I'm going to lean my hand a little bit so that I'm making one end skinnier than the other. See, like that. Doesn't have to be a point on the end. But you just want it to be like a fat teardrop. And sit that down on your work surface or on a patty paper or a piece of anything that you've got. And this is going to be the body of our panda. Then I've got a three-quarter inch ball for the head, and that gets to stay round. But I don't think I'm going to put that on yet. I think I'm going to work on the head separately. So let's not do the head yet. Let's start with the legs. I've got two three-quarter inch balls, uh, one for each leg. And I'm going to roll those sort of into a teardrop. Well, it didn't get much of a teardrop because I changed the position of my hands. But I'm going to just make a little fat cl 
club like shape. Be narrow at one end and fat at the other. And you want to keep this side straight, the bottom part you want to keep kind of flat. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. And if you're like me and you get too heavy handed and it rolls, got a little piece of white on that, but I'll just put that on the bottom. You might have to reshape it, but that's okay. That's what's one of the great things about clay. And I think I'll shorten this one a little bit. These are going to be my legs, and I'm going to just press this into each side at the bottom for his legs. And you can flatten this a little bit if you want. I wouldn't flatten it too much, but just make sure that it'll sit up. Because I want to keep this end round, because those are going to be his paws. Okay, so I've got his legs. Now, talking about paws, um, I've got two 3 16 inch white pieces, and those will be for his paw pads. And just, I'm going to just pick this up for now. I'm going to take this and put it in this at the bottom of this little pad and just flatten it a little bit. Take this one and flatten it a little bit. And that's the bottom of his paws. Now I've got... Where am I? I'm on the white. I have some 1 8 inch circles. And I've got six of them. And I'm going to put three on each foot above this pad. So holding it like this, I'm going to take one and put there. And these might even be a little bit big, but, you know, it's not meant to be lifelike. But press three of those. Whoops. My thumbnail got stuck in his foot. See that? Isn't that cute? So let me do this one. Try to get them as close to the same as you can. So now those are his foot pads and his legs. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is um, do his face. Maybe not. Maybe I'll do his arms. I'm going to do the same thing with his arms, except these are five-eighths of an inch square uh, circles, uh, balls. But I'm going to make that into like a little club shape. Like I say, this is not my forte. It's not something that I do. Well, let's say it's not anything I've done before. So it's going to be interesting to see how this turns out. But I'm going to take this arm. I'm just going to bend it around so it doesn't look like he's deformed. And press it around, uh, near at the top of his body. And you can have his hand, arms wherever you want. If you want to put pads on his hands, you can. But I didn't cut any, and now I've got black clay on my hands. But you might want to do the same thing on the front as you did on his paws with the little circles. All right, so now I'm going to set him aside for a while, and I'm going to work on his head. Now, I've got a one-quarter inch ball of white. That's going to be his muzzle, but before I put it on, 
I want to flatten it and make it into like a little rounded triangle shape. Go press a point at the top. Make, see, it's, it's like a rounded triangle. Might make this a little bit wider at the bottom. And I'm going to place that right about there on his head. And the reason I'm doing this separate is because it's easier to work on the head while it's loose than it is when you, once you put it on your animal. So let's put his muzzle on. Then I have a small piece, and I think this might even be a little bit too big. I'm going to take another tiny ball and make it into a little triangle shape also by pressing like this. See, I've got a little triangle shape. And I'm going to have this point coming down. And I'm going to put that near the top of his muzzle. And then you can shape it as you press it into the shape that you want. Isn't that cute? Use my fingernails. I don't have fingernails very often, but in the springtime, they seem to grow. Of course, I have fingernail marks in my clay now, so I'm just going to take a clay shaper and just smooth it out a little bit. And you'd never know it was there. This also, if you want to use this to shape instead of your fingernails, you have to understand, when I started, I had very few supplies. Alright, so we've got his, no his muzzle and his nose. Now, I've got, let's see, what's the next? I've got, those are for his ears. Let's do his eye patches next. These are 3 sixteenths of an inch balls. I'm going to mash them and make them into a little bit of an oval. And you can just press it and shape it with your fingers. Just make it into like an oval. Do the same with both. And take these and apply the, his eye patches sort of at an angle right above his nose. Sorry that I turned him upside down for you, but that's the best way I could see to get this on the right way. Okay, so there's his black patches. And now I have some 1 16th white that I'm going to place sort of near the bottom of his eye patches. Then I've got some, I don't even have a measurement for these. These are just teeny tiny little pieces of black that's going to be the rest of his eye. Press that in the middle there. And as you can see, they could have even been a little bit smaller, as tiny as they were. And now, I think I'm going to go ahead and put him on here. I'm 
kind of made his head deep instead of round. Let me make sure it's back into a round shape. And I may need to practice a little bit. But this is my very first one, and so far I think he's turning out pretty good. Then I've got some... Where's his ears? His ears. Some 5 sixteenths, with it, which is just slightly larger than a um, one quarter. And I'm going to kind of mash them just to flatten them a little bit. And they might be even a little bit too big. Let me see. Yeah, I think it makes him look like a panda. And I'm going to take those and I'm going to press this in on either side for his ears. I really think I need tinier black dots on his eyes because that looks... He looks kind of bug-eyed. <laughs> Let me use my needle tool to get some of this black out. Maybe I should have just left it alone. Actually, what I think I needed to do is move this white up a little bit. I've got it too low. That's what's making him look bug-eyed. Whoops. And maybe if I press it and make the white a little bit bigger. But now that's gotten dirty. So, let me, let's see, I thought I'd gotten all of my little balls made, but let me just do another tiny ball. These are supposed to be one-eighth of an inch, so they were pretty small. A little bit smaller than that. You can see, this is what I did this morning. I sat here for like an hour trying to size balls of clay. I think what I'm going to do, and you don't have to do this, but I'm going to, if you have a like a large ball tool, I would take it and just kind of press it in his ear to make it look more like an ear. Can you see that? Just helps him look a little bit more like a bear. And another thing you can do, if you're concerned about your head staying on, these are my measurements, can't forget those, is take a, take a toothpick and press it into the bottom of his head. And we don't need that much. Maybe cut it off have about maybe a half an inch or so and stick that down in here into the body. So I'm just going to take it and stick it right there in the body. Probably ought to pick this up to do that. And that way it holds the head on. But I haven't pushed it down all the way yet. There we go. 
but I think he's kind of bu still a bug-eyed panda. I'm going to make another one for my sister, but there's our little panda. And I think I will, when I make hers, put the little paws on the ends of the hands, too. You can make him shorter and fatter if you want. You know, I didn't make him too fat, but most pandas are pretty fat. So I would make him short and fat. But I would bake this at least an hour at 275 since this is Primo Clay. And if you want... Um, I don't remember what I was going to say. Call that a senior moment. I'm just trying to think... But just make sure he sits up. Bake him sitting up like this. And cover him. He is white. And I don't know if you are aware of this, but if you don't cover your white clay, it might change color. But I think I'm going to redo him for my sister. I don't know. And I'll bake them both at the same time. So I will not have um, a picture of this one baked until after I do my sister's. But I will post a picture of it somewhere. But there's my little panda. I think he's cute. So hope you like this. Like I said, I am not a sculptor. I don't do animals for that very reason. Because I just don't do well with, um, with animals. So you might want to make the... Make sure your black here for the pupils is teeny, 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 tiny. Even tinier than the ones that I used. But there you go. So, hope everyone enjoyed this. I will be back again next month with another polymer clay video. Thanks. Bye-bye.